it's Ruby and today I'm going to be showing you an updated bookshelf tour. I did one of these a year and a half ago I believe and I've been getting a lot of requests to do another one. So unlike my last one, today I'm actually going to be showing you all of the books on my bookshelf as opposed to just generally telling you where things are. As for last time I will be starting with the books that I keep on the top shelf. So I'll be starting this side. So first of all, here on the end, I have this book of creative writing from when I went to a creative writing course. And then I also have this uh, Project of Stars that I did. I have this um, photo album that my parents made for me for my eighth birthday. It's just filled with loads of pictures of friends and family when I was little. Then I keep the school magazines here. Um, I have this magical Christmas colouring book, my learn to read Latin workbook, the general composition book, this notepad. Here in this pocket I keep all of my parchment. I have this issue of Vogue which is September 2015 because Emma Watson was on the cover. I have another set of creative writing from a creative writing course. One children's book that I keep on my bookshelf which is The Incredible Book Eating Boy. This August 2013. Teen Vogue, my Spanish verb wheel, my listography book, a novel journal which my friend Immy gave to me. Then I've got my life in diagrams. Next, here I've got my Sherlock Chronicles book. Then I've got this uh, visual, a visual quick start guide to Final Cut Pro X, the Curious Nature Guide. And then over here I've got some books that I've been meaning to read but I haven't got around to reading yet. So I've got um, A Childhood at Green Hedges. Why Only Us, The High School Survival Guide, The Martian, which Ruby got me for Christmas, Famous Last Words, The Snow Child, and I Have Waited and You Have Come. Next I've got The Art of Higgy, Einstein's Riddle, 500 Words You Should Know, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. That book actually should be back there, so that's a mistake on my part, but this is another book I've been meaning to read, which is Beside Myself. Then I've got three DVDs. We keep most of the DVDs downstairs. These three are perhaps my three favourite films, so I like to keep them in my bedroom. I've got Annie, A Little Princess, and Miracles from Heaven. Then over here, I keep some of my Simpsons books. My Simpsons Library of Wisdom. Um, then I've also got the Lisa Simpson Guide to Geek Chic. Three books on The Simpsons. So I've got the Maths behind The Simpsons, the Psychology behind The Simpsons, and the Philosophy behind The Simpsons. The right-hand side, I have spare copies of the first, second, third and fourth Harry Potter books. So now let's go on to the next shelf. So right on the side here, I keep the series of Miss Peregrine's, the Bad Girls Don't Die trilogy. Uh, next I keep my Sherlock Holmes books. So I've got The Sign of Four, The Return of Sherlock Holmes, Study in Scarlet, His Last Bow, and The Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. I really love these editions because they're the BBC ones. Next is a trip down memory lane really because I like to keep all of my Mallory Towers books, the first, second, fourth and sixth. And then I also got this uh, Mallory Towers book which is the eighth one but it's in Spanish. Next over here, these are all of my favourite books but they're all contemporary. Perks of Being a Wallflower, How's Moving Castle, The Dark is Rising, The Lovely Bones, Me and Emma, Love Aubrey, the Book Thief, My Sister's Keeper, Skellig, My Name is Mina, um, Life of Pi, Summer's Dream, The Clique, um, A Little Princess, Peter Pan, Charlotte Sometimes, Coraline, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, Travelling to Infinity, which actually is on the shelf but I haven't read it yet, it's only because it wouldn't fit on this shelf. Uh, the fifth book in the Series of Unfortunate Events series, I really love The Austere Academy. The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender, uh, Doppler and lastly A Monster Calls. This shelf is mainly for classical fiction really. First of all I keep my 221B Baker Street from the page candle. So right on the end there you can't really see it but I keep my A to C book of grammar and punctuation. I keep my favourite poetry anthologies here. I've got The Collected Poems of Sylvia Plath, Disinformation by Francis Leveston, Frank Freeman's Dancing School, my favourite poetry anthology of all time which is American Poetry, an introductory anthology edited by Donald Hall. The complete works of Emily Dickinson. She's probably my favourite poet of all time. Then I've got Poems to Lisi, which is by Francisco de Quevedo. Uh, next I've got some the selected poems of Lorca. So next here, leading on from the Spanish theme, because these two are Spanish poets, I've got this Penguin Parallel Text, which is short stories, and they've got the English on one side and the Spanish on the other. Two of the... Uh, little Black Penguin Classics and I really love these, they're only 80 pence to a pound each and they give you the best of an author. So I've got the Edgar Allan Poe and the Frederick Nietzsche. 
Then here I keep my Penguin English Library Classics editions. Um, I've got The Woman in White, The Murders of the Rue Morgue, Gulliver's Travels, Kim, The Lat of Lolita by uh, Vladimir Novikov. I've got The Scarlet Letter, Great Expectations, Ulysses by James Joyce, which I haven't managed to read yet, The Ballad of the Sad Cafe by Carson McCullers, and Ancient Tillage, The Man Who Walked Through the Walls, I Am David, which isn't actually a classic, The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy, Journals of Sylvia Plath, Ghost Set of Watchmen, and To Kill a Mockingbird. Then over here I keep some plays. So I've got King Lear, Why is John Lennon Wearing a Skirt, and The Spectacles. And then here I've got uh, The Moment and Other Essays by Virginia Woolf. Then over here, this is all really just notepads. And now perhaps the best shelf of the whole of my bookshelf, which is my Harry Potter shelf. So I keep all of my Harry Potter books on here, save the four that are for travelling. So here on the end, official guide from the studio tour, and I've also got this Harry Potter colouring book that my friend Elise got me for my birthday. Then I've got the Film Wizardry book, the Character Vault book, and I've got the two illustrated editions, so the Philosopher's Stone and the Chamber of Secrets, and I really do love these. If you haven't got a copy, I really recommend them. The illustrations are literally just so beautiful. Jim Kay's illustrations are incredible. My Hermione Granger pop figure at the back, and here I've got my letter opener, which is the Gryffindor sword. My cousin's actually got this for me for my birthday. Um, and I've always wanted a letter opener. I think that they are really, really cool. And whenever I receive posts, I really enjoy slicing it open with this amazing Godric Gryffindor sword. Then I've got the signature editions of the first four books in the series, which is why I like to have travel editions, because these are such gorgeous books. These ones my parents actually got before I was born. Fifth book, I don't actually know the edition, what the name of the, this edition is, but then I've got the two children's paperbacks for the sixth and seventh. Then I've got The Tales of the Beetle and the Bard, which is actually signed by J.K. Rowling, which is pretty incredible. Quidditch Through the Ages and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And then here I've got the Fantastic Beasts official screenplay, I've got Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And then over here I've got all of my DVDs, all of the Ultimate Editions. And these are amazing because they come with loads of deleted scenes and interviews, as well as just the film. And last but not least is my non-fiction shelf. So first of all in the end I just have two little decorations. I've got this bracelet that my friend Ellie got me a few years ago and I never actually took it out of the packaging because I just thought it was so beautiful and I wanted to have it on display. And then I also have the business card of Wool and Marguerite because I really like her products. Then I've got two of these little metal decorative coins. This one's got a four leaf clover on it and this one says to be or not to be. Then I've got my massive Collins Spanish Dictionary. I have this pocket Spanish um, phrase book for when I go to Spain. The Stinking Story of Rubbish, which I actually got when I was six. And this is arranged according to the Dewey Decimal System, so all of these books are geography. I've got, um, well, I've got the population, I've got Where on Earth, the Usborne Geography Complete World Encyclopedia. Then I've got When the Rivers Run Dry by Fred Pierce, um, Prisoners of Geography, but here is Science. So, I have three Stephen Hawking books, A Brief History of Time, The Theory of Everything, and The Grand Design. The Universe Inside of You by Brian Clegg. Solar System book, again it's really easy. I've got this book which is... it's a lot more informative. This is The Space Book by Jim Bell. I got this from the Science Museum when I went a few years ago. And it's basically a timeline of all of the discoveries that they've made relating to space and also the things that they expect to happen in the future. So then I've got this book that my cousin got me and it's the best um, answers to science questions and these are so funny. Things like, which gas compromises 21% of the atmosphere? Air. In search of Joe Dinger's cat, um, how big is infinity? Why does E equal MC squared? Then over here are history books. So the first one is Remember the Alamo, Oxford, A Very Peculiar History, In Flight Science. Oh, that's in the wrong place. The next book is Medieval Views of the Cosmos by E. Edson and E. Savage Smith. The day that the Bastille fell, because the French Revolution is probably my favourite period of history ever. Following on from that, I've got The French Revolution by Christopher Hibbert, which is my favourite account. Next, I've got um, Gillian... 
Baverstock remembers Enid Blyton, so she's one of Enid Blyton's daughters. John Sutherland's A Little History of Literature. On Writers and Writing by Margaret Atwood. Two books by Mark Forsyth. The Horologicon and The Elements of Eloquence. Then next I've got Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. Uh, Eyes for Influence, The Definitive Book of Body Language, Personality Disorders by Carol C. Nadelson, MD, from Harvard University. Queen Bees and Wannabes, which is basically a non-fiction book about American high schools, which Mean Girls was based on. Then I've got this book, which is Painless American Government, God Delusion by Richard Dawkins. I've got this book by Albert, Albert Camus, The Outsider, Situation Ethics by... Harvey Cox, Introducing Linguistics, Heads Up Philosophy, Linguistics and Introduction, Second Edition by William V. McGregor. And then on the end here I have some folders of revision notes. So thank you so much for watching, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video, have a productive week!